and this is actually it. So all you need to do is just to run node index.js, we open the page, we scroll down, we get the places, and this is it. This is how our parse is going to work. Hi guys, it's been a while since I last time published the video, so I was looking at the app work, what people do. As you can see, there are a lot of people who are using the scrapping services. So I just opened the first one and um, there are some requests to parse Google Maps. Yeah, so this guy had at least three requests in this year. So maybe some of you will be interested in that, so I decided to implement it on my own. So let's say you want to get information about all of the sushi restaurants in Houston. So we can just copy this query and paste it into the postman. Let's open it, run the new query, type. And uh, here we go. Here is actually what we got from the Google Maps. Unfortunately, again, if you look at this content, there are actually a lot of mess. So this information, based on my experience, it cannot be easily parsed. So Google are not really welcomed uh, for you. So <laughs> they do not expect that you can get this information for your needs. All right, maybe in this case, if we'd like to look at the network, we will get more success. But again, whenever you, whenever you scroll down, you can see that there are a lot of HTTP requests and um, none of them are using, you know, like JSON or data that can be consumed easily for you. Most of the time, this is just some binary format that I have no idea how to parse. It looks like a challenging task for me, so that's why I've decided to implement this parser with the Puppeter package. So as a part of this video, I'll show you how you can open the Google Maps page, how you can scroll down, parse the places, go to the next page, parse the next places, and so on and so forth until, until you'll get all the places that are available to you by this query. So let's get started. Okay, so to complete this project, we need the Node.js framework. You can download it from the nodejs.org. Next, I created an empty folder, and here I'd like to initialize our project. So we can type npm init y. And here we go. Okay, so now we have the empty project and we need to add a dependency. The package that I'm going to use for scraping data from the Google Maps is the Puppeter. So you can find it at the github.com. All we need to do is just to run this command in the terminal. So if we go back to the VS Code, we can type it here and just wait until it installed. During installation, it is going to download the Chromium browser and maybe the Firefox, but that should be fine. Okay, next, uh, the package is installed, so what we can do is just create the index.js file. And um, let's see that it works. So we just type console log, and here I can type not index.js, and it works. The next thing to make sure is that the Puppeter package works. So we can copy this code, paste it into our file. And um, instead of using this way, I'd like to specify um, headless, like false, just to show you how it works under the hood. So let's type node index.js. Okay, it was too fast. So instead, let's uh, comment this line and run it once again. Here we go. So what is actually happening? Uh, we create the browser. We open a new page, we go to the example.com and we make a screenshot. So other words, what we have now in the folder is the image of the page that we've just opened. And I would say that this is all we need to start working on our parser. So let's say that we'd like to parse information about all of the sushi restaurants in Houston. So if we type it here, we can see a lot of them. 
then we navigate to the next page we see 20 more and pay attention that all we have at the first is just seven or eight places then we scroll down and the google loads additional places some more and only after that you go to the next page so while working on this project what we will need is that to open this page got the places then we will need to scroll down get the next places and the next one and only after that when we have all the places parsed from this page we go to the next page and we're going to do this until all the places are parsed so in order to get the query string for this search i think we can remove this part type it and here we go so this is all we need to start parsing the data so we can copy this uh, query put it here and just to make sure that it works um, once again we can run node.index.js this one opened and at the example.png we can see this information so next i'd like to change the size of this page so i can paste these lines and just set the viewport again if we run it we should see that now the size of the window is bigger and uh, the page is also bigger so you can see more information on this single page so next we actually don't need this screenshot and i can also remove this line save it and i think we can start parsing data so for example if i open it and um, I'd like, to, I'd like to get information about the name of this place. So as you can see on the right side, um, what we have here is um, we have some HTML markup. So what I'm going to do is I need to find the exact element in this markup. And here we go. I would say that Google is not welcome to us because as you can see the class names are a complete mess. But however, if you take a look at this one, you can see like GM2 subtitle alt1. So this is exactly what we need. And uh, even though this information is not a part of this div, we can start with this div and then we will get the name of this place. So what is actually going to happen is uh, we are going to find all of the elements with this class on the page and just get the name from it. I can show you at the console so I think if you type document query select role and just paste this class name you will get the list of these elements and as I told you there are only seven elements right now on the page if we scroll down and type it once again now there are 14 elements once again and now it's 20 next let's create the function parse places and um, pass the page object as a parameter. I don't want to bore you guys with the typing lines of code, so let me just paste it here and explain it to you one by one. So we have the empty array of places. Next, we're going to get the elements from the page with this method. So as you can see, we use the same query selector, and what we're going to have as a part of the elements is um, a list of spans that we extracted from the page so if we go back to the page um, this is our selector and this is our list of spans so if we open it you can see that actually the name of the restaurant is just the inner html or the inner text property after that uh, we will just iterate through the elements and get the name of it with the using of the evaluate function so this is it let's call this function from our main page we pass the page we await let's take const places await and just console log these places so if we run it once again we see the error and okay the reason for it is because um yeah i think the reason for it is because our function is not a sync but we are using the await, so we need to add this one here, save it, and run once again. 
So the browser started, we got the data, and now we have our first seven places parsed. So now, in order to get the next places, we need to scroll down in the list of places at the Google Maps. So instead of writing my own function, I've just found that um, you can actually use this one. So we can copy this auto scroll function and paste it into our project. Let's paste it here. But instead of scrolling to the document body scroll height, we need to find the element that we're going to use for our scrolling. If we get back to our page and again we open it and we need to look at the we need to look at this element. But unfortunately, this is not the only my element on this page. So another one is its parent. So instead of using this one, we will need to use the second one. So for doing that, we're going to use document query select role. We paste this one. We see that we have two elements in this node list. So this way we can access only the second element. Let's get back to our function. So these two lines we're going to replace with these ones. So what is happening here once again? At this line we're saying that we're going to run this function in the context of this page. Next we will return the promise that will be resolved once we scroll to the bottom of this page. The bottom of the page, but actually not the page, but the element is declared by comparison uh, heights of your current height and uh, the height of the element. And here, this is just the set interval. So we run this function each 100 milliseconds. So we get the element and we scroll down, we increase the total height and the actual scroll is happening. Well, where is actually happening? Yeah, my bad. I, I forgot to paste this line as well. So, and in this line, actually we scroll by um, this distance in this element. So we get this element and we use it for scrolling on this distance. I think we can increase the distance to 300 instead of 100. Okay, and let's call, let's call actually this function and see how it works. So let's go here. Once we parse our places, we can call it. And let's start once again and see how it works. So we open it, we get the places, and now we scroll to the bottom. So let's say we got 20 places from this query. And the next thing that we're going to do is actually to go to the next page. Let's open the HTML markup and see how we can find this button. We can actually find the button with the area label property and its value is the next page. So in order to do it, we just let's open the console document query select role. And here we need to type that we are looking for a button and um, its area label attribute should have the value of next page. Something like that. And unfortunately, we haven't found anything. So I think the problem in this, yes, in the extra space. And here we go. So now, since we have this button, we can actually click on it. Let's try to do it from here. Let's get it and uh, click. So this is what we are going to do in our code. We need to find the button, click on it and get the next list of pages. So I think we can copy this selector, go back to the code and um, I'm going to add the next uh, function. Go to next page. Again, we pass the page parameter. And this is the selector that we're going to use. So again, I'm going to just paste these two lines of code. Uh, the selector is the same, so we don't need it. So what is happening is we just use the click function of the page and uh, we'll click on this element. And the last thing here is that um, we don't want to run our code until all the HTTP requests are completed. So we can just call this function that will wait for it.
Again, since this function is going to use the weight, we need to mark it as a sync. And let's try to call it and see how it is going to work. So I can copy it, I can put it here, call a weight. So let's start it, not index.js. So we open it, we scroll to the bottom, and then we click. All right, so I think we have everything we need to start implementing our loop. So all the elements are in place, and let's get back to the code. Okay, so let's see how it will work. Let's do some very dumb implementation. Do while true. I know it's stupid, but we're going to work on this one a bit later. So let's say we have let places is the empty one. We're going to put this one here. I'd like to console log these places. And yeah, so we will have the infinite loop. So when we open the page, we scroll to the bottom, get the places and go to the next page. This is all we need. So let's see how it is going to work. Right, node index JS. Here we go. So it is actually iterating over the pages and um, yeah, I hope it, it gets information. Yes, it and it constantly printing it. Looks cool. I'm not sure that we may even need something else besides this one. I would say that this is actually the basic implementation uh, for parsing the Google Maps. And once it's done, um, you will see that actually the infinite loop is just keep running. So now instead of running our loop infinitely, uh, I'd like to implement the stop condition. I think the best way to do it is just to make sure that the next page button is disabled. And uh, let's open it at the markup. Here we go. As I showed you before, all we can do actually just, we can just get this button by area label with the value next page. Let's get it. Let's open the console document query selector. Here we go. And uh, we need to say that we're looking for the button. And that's it. If there is no more pages that would like to parse, you can see that there is a property called disabled equals true. So this is what we're going to looking for. We can get back to our application. And uh, I'm going to paste this function. Again, let me explain you how it works. We are looking for this element of the page by this selector. If we don't have it, we will throw the error. Next, we are going to parse the disabled value. Again, we call this function in the context of this page. So we'll get the element attribute disabled, and then we will just uh, return its value. So the name of this function is has next page. Again, we need to parse the page into it. And instead of running while true, let me say while await has next page page. So whenever we have elements, we will keep running this loop. And after that, when we don't have it, let's let's actually print all the places afterwards instead of printing them during the run. And instead of overwriting our places at um, each iteration, Let's say we want to call places concat and pass this function. In this case, we will just add new places to the existing array and finally we will place them. But let's add some additional information like parsed, I don't know, places, length, places, just to make sure that it's keep working. Okay, let's run node index.js. And we'll see how it works. So we run it on the left and we can see that it's actually working. I don't know why, but uh, we got 22 places instead of 20. Usually, usually whenever I run this function, I got 20 places each time, but okay. The more is the better. 
and this is it um again i don't know why <laughs> why we end up in this city instead of houston but all in all i think that all of these places uh what we were looking for at houston from now on you can you can do with these places whatever you want you can export it to the csv file or for example if you'd like to get more information about these places then you might want to get the link of it like this one because uh, by default uh, google maps does not allow you to get information about the website or about the telephone number so if you'd like to get this information as well what you need to do is you can parse this link and uh, just open it so if you open it in the new tab again you will get uh, the information about this place and you will be able to extract phone number the website maybe the address whatever you want and this is it for today thank you so much for watching this video um, please let me know if if there is something else that I can cover in my next video about parsing Google Maps, maybe I forgot something. And have a good day.